Good morning, Sheila. How are you doing? Good morning, Wayne. I'm very good today. How about yourself? I am well. Thank you for asking. It is such a lovely day. <laughs> yes, it is. And welcome, everyone, to 27 Minutes with Sheila and Wayne, where we explore the fascinating world of verbs and their impact on our daily lives. Join us each week as we delve into the different ways verbs shape our language and influence our lives. As we attempt to make a positive difference in our world, one verb at a time. Yes. <laughs> and Sheila, oh, wow. That's uh, quite you the verb what? we have today. Wait, what no, verb? how many? Do you know what verb we have today? I do know what verb we have. And for a minute there, I realized I was interrupting you because you might say how many episodes we have Oh, I know that answer too. What? How many episodes have we have we built? Today will today will be one hundred and twelve. One hundred and twelve. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> our verb today. Before I say our verb today, uh, we have one or two trivia questions. Do we not? Okay, I have one. Do you have one? Okay, I have one too. Then we, um, have two. Then we will ask these trivia questions first, and then we will answer them at the end of the show. Okay. So. My first one, mine first is the word we've chosen today. The verb we've chosen today was on the short list for word of the year in 2018, according to Oxford Languages Words of the Year contest. What was the word that ended up taking first place? Ooh, nice one. Okay, let's hear yours. My trivia question is, when was the verb ghosting officially, which is actually a gerund, officially entered into the Merriam Dic Webster Dictionary. Oh, I think that's a clue as to what our word is. I think it is. So what is our, <laughs> what is our verb? Our verb is to ghost, but I do need for you to tell me what gerund means. Oh, gerund is the past participle of of the verb. So it's the root form plus, so it's, it's actually, um, it is in the noun, it's in the noun form. Okay. So it's a verb in the noun form. So this okay. what, and, it, and it just means it's adding ing to the verb. Oh, that's okay. all it is. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Boy, I had to go back to my English 101 class there. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I took English 101, and you remember a lot more of it than I do. <laughs> Don't even ask me what a dangling participle is, and we we won't go any further down that path right now. Okay, Maybe good. in another day. But <laughs> right. I know I got four definitions of this to ghost verb, and I'm sure you got twelve. I've got six. <laughs> okay. All right. well, well, I'll start with a few and then you finish up with your extended list. Okay. Number one, to act as a ghost writer. In other words, writing for someone else under that other person's name. Uh -huh. To glide smoothly and effortlessly as if sailing on a smooth uh, body of water. Ooh. I know. Uh, of course, the one that's most famous right now, to end a personal relationship with someone by suddenly and without explanation, withdrawing from all communication. Mm -hmm. And number four, to haunt like a ghost. Ah, okay. And so I am going to give you three three more. Okay. To write a book, article, et cetera, for another person to okay. publish under their own name. Okay. As you said, to end a relationship with someone suddenly by stopping all communication with them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to cut off all contact with somebody abruptly and usually without explanation. So okay. very, very similar definitions mm -hmm. here. And mm -hmm. the other three I won't say because they're the same as yours. Oh, OK. <laughs> all right. Which is good. Yes. Yes. So now I have to ask. We yes. ask this all the time, yes, but I'm do. really excited to ask this one today. <laughs> When we talked about the verb ghost last week, when yes. we knew we were going to do it today, what mm -hmm. were your thoughts? I um, love exploring words that are kind of newly entered into the uh, uh, modern language okay. or or whose meanings have changed dramatically as slang. Uh -huh. So I thought this is going to be interesting. But when I actually started researching it, I thought, oh, this is going to be really fun. Okay. How about you? <laughs> I had the same thoughts. I said, okay. this is going to be fun because it's a new verb for me. Uh -huh. and, and now, as I did the research, I realized that, oh, okay, decades ago, I've seen this happen, mm -hmm. but it wasn't couched as ghosting it, right. or, or ghosting someone. Um, and so it was fun. It was really, really fun. 
It was. I, I also I, learned a lot of new slang words that accompany it. And I also learned, and I'll tell you later, I okay. also learned about a um, Lithuanian Soviet so, um, so, psychologist who has a phenomenon using, okay. and and she talks about ghosting then. It, she didn't say ghosting, but right. uh, it certainly is in that realm. So that'll come later in, in, our, in our talk today. Cool. So I'm excited. Me so what, <laughs> would you like to start or you want me to start or what? What's going I would like on? you to start today. Okay. I took I found an article by Christy DePaul. Fun article. And it's in it's in HBR, which is Harvard Business Review. Mm -hmm. And it says, What are the most common forms of ghosting at work? Good. And it goes further and talks about why do people ghost? So I said, Ah, well, that's kind of cool. Now, this is about my 15th article. And this was the one that was more exciting to me than the others okay? because it has some information here, things that you like. It's got statistics. <laughs> I do like a good statistic. So, so I, I like said, a bad oh. one too, but. <laughs> okay. I said she would like this. So here we go. Um, so what are the most common forms of ghosting at work? She says during job searches. Mm -hmm. So job searches, she says someone applies to a job schedules an interview and then suddenly has a change of heart and maybe they got a raise in their cu current role or received a better offer mm. either way they decide to bail on the interview and the recruiter is ghosted so we're <laughs> ghosting the recruiter she said in in a 2021 indeed survey nearly half 46 percent of job seekers admitted that they have done this Wow. <laughs> That's a larger number than I would have anticipated. Same here. <laughs> okay. I'll do another one and then, and then I will turn to you, my friend. Hiring. She says in the hiring process, someone lands a job after a rigorous application progress. They ask the recruiter to send along an employment contract and any other documents that need to be signed, but never hear back. In the Indeed survey, a majority of job seekers, 77% said they've been ghosted by a prospective employer since the U.S. onset of the pandemic last March. Mm -hmm. And with one in 10 reporting that an employer ghosted them after a verbal job offer was made. Interesting. And she says there was, in a LinkedIn poll, there was 93% of respondents say they've been ghosted at some point in an active hiring process. I, and again, that's just staggering to me. 93% of people were ghosted and 77% were ghosted when they had, had an actual job offered to them. <laughs> you know, it's it, another thing that's interesting to me about that is that I can kind of understand, I don't necessarily agree with, but I understand the perspective of a prospective employee who goes a different path. But the, for the employer to ghost after they've given a job offer, that's kind of bizarre to me. It Exactly. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Interesting. Goodness. Well, I'll follow up that, Wayne, uh, with a little article I read. Um, okay. It turns out in LinkedIn, there are these WCT tracks that you can read, Winning Career Tips by different mm. people. So Neil Denziger, CFA, wrote in 2024, when you are ghosted as a job hunter, what you what you can do, things you can do to kind of turn it around uh, or to prevent it. So the first thing he suggested is to communicate transparently. So just be straightforward, up, mm. up front. Um, okay. The second thing, build strong relationships with the recruiters and the hiring managers. And I'm not sure, you know, do you bring cookies to the interview? I don't know. But certainly with the recruiters, you have time for conversations. Um, so I'm, so I, I get that. I'm not sure how you do that for the hiring managers. Maybe it is chocolate chip cookies. Um, <laughs> follow up diligently after the interview with thank you emails uh, and interactions. And I want to, as an aside, ask later if you think that thank you emails are as good as thank you notes See, in a job I, search. I was thinking about that as soon as you said that uh -huh. because I said I learned and I grew up that you do a handwritten thank you note. I did too, but is that still current advice? Is that still – so anyway, that's another conversation in a few minutes. Stay persistent. And it said when you don't hear from the recruiter or the a hiring manager, try three times. It may be they just got really busy, something fell through the cracks. Three times seems to be the magic number before you give up. 
And the point is you can't control what someone else does, but you can control what you do. And so yeah. remain resilient and uh, keep on using that energy to go in a different direction, to redirect your energy to what you can control and the next interview. So I thought cool. those were good ideas. And in terms of the thank you notes, I don't know. I still think handwritten thank you notes are well received. And, and I think that's generational. I do too, to tell you the truth. Because today, with most people using social media, um, it's it's almost like the norm that they, they get information back and forth through email, texting, mm -hmm. TikTok, or whatever it is that they're using, mm -hmm. Instagram. Um, so I think possibly that the younger generations be um, uh, they accept the email, thank you, just as though it would be a handwritten note. Mm -hmm. I. I, don't I know. still I, feel like it's kind of lazy on my part if I just send any. I mean, it's better than nothing. But. <laughs> That's absolutely true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, Christy talked about quitting as well. Ah. She said someone grows tired of their role. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have an overbearing boss or just hate work. Instead of making a dramatic exit, they decide to leave without notice. And she said in a 2018 um, report by the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, employers reported that many employees are simply no longer showing up to work, hmm. whether virtual or otherwise, and it's impossible to contact them. <laughs> she said mm -hmm. there's even a startup that came out of this resigning on behalf of employees. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And she says that... Um, they have that without without so the employee's not ghosting, but the firm has quit more than fifteen hundred jobs and counting for these individuals who just don't show wow. up anymore. <laughs> do they um do that for bad relationships too? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> they might start a branch for that. Of course they'd have to have security, but <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Exactly. Well, we had uh, years ago, we had a staff member who went on maternity leave, which, you know, was available as a part of the benefits package. And and she moved during her maternity leave and never came back. And, <laughs> and <laughs> you know, a little anybody. notice would have been nice. <laughs> yes. I, I, I have to tell you this story. OK. Um, several years ago, when I was doing a lot of speaking, I was asked to go and speak to a group about a certain subject. Mm -hmm. And I learned from this. This was a learning lesson for me. Okay. And so so now when individuals say, oh, and what are you going to talk about? Um, you know, and tell us, and give us an outline. I don't do outlines. I don't reviews. And I don't send information forward anymore. Mm. I just say, if you want me to come talk about X, Y, Z, I will come talk about X, Y, Z. And here's why. Um. I had I had been asked, and I was I was not the first person. I was the the, the kind of like the the second person because the person they wanted wasn't available. Mm -hmm. But that person said, "Oh, but you could talk to Wayne because Wayne is an expert in this kind of area. So go ahead and, and get him on board, and and you'll be fine." And they said, "Okay." So they sent me the information. I said, "Oh yeah, I can do this. That's easy." And I said, "Just give me a, a week or two to do a little bit more current research, and I'll be with you." And so the and you were talking about the um, HR person mm -hmm. and, and not the boss, but the HR person. So yes. the HR person and I were having a conversation, um, you know, over a few weeks. And the HR person said, oh, well, the boss wants to know how are you going to say this? Or, mm -hmm. And the boss wants to know um, how are you going to how are you going to couch this with these individuals in, in doing this with this kind of a thing going on at this person at this particular time? And so oh, that's easy. I'm going to do this. And then for two weeks, I didn't hear anything. And it was getting close to the time that I was supposed to be there. And okay, here comes the, we're seven days out. So I, and I'm sending notes, I'm sending email, I'm sending letters to the mm. HR person, my contact saying, um, hey, what's going on? When do you want me? Um, <laughs> right. What what time, uh, you know, where's the, where's the funds for the plane trip, plane trip? plane ticket mm -hmm. and I got nothing I got nothing I got nothing then the day came <clears throat> where I was supposed to be there 
And I had already res resolved myself, you know, three days earlier that, okay, it's not going to happen. I'm not going. And so I was doing other things. Um, and here we go with, <laughs> I learned through this process. I love doing this with you. And I love doing the research because I learn new things all the time. Okay, me too. There's a phenomenon called the Zig Garnet effect, the Zig Garnet effect. Huh. And it is from a Lithuanian Soviet psychologist, mm -hmm. Bluma Ziganit, and it's talking about unfinished business where you need closure. Yes. And so you're doing things, but and your mind is going, I need, I need, and it's much like this. If I go, da 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 da. I'm <laughs> waiting. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the Z Garnet effect. We're waiting for that. Okay, we got to finish it. We got to finish right. it. <laughs> you got to do the dun dun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and when you do the dun dun, okay, it's all done. So my mind was still, you know, troubling as to what was going on. So I initiated another engagement letter with the HR person mm -hmm. and said, Hey, can can we have a phone call? Um, did this happen? Did it not happen? What's going on? I'm I really need to know. And this was about three weeks later. <clears throat> And the HR person did call me. Oh. And he said, Wayne, I have to tell you, I'm really embarrassed. Um, and I'm only talking to you because I'm leaving the organization mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I don't like our boss. Bah, 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 bah. Anyway, he said, the boss stole your oh. material and attempted to do the function himself. Oh. And, I, and I said, well, how did it go? He said, <laughs> he bombed miserably. <laughs> mm, no one can do what you do, Wayne. And, and, and I, I said to myself, yes, <laughs> that bombed miserably. But by the same token, I learned that I don't give my information away anymore. Good idea. Because yep. I'm, no, I'm just not going to do that. Um, <laughs> and you know, it wasn't a lot of money, but it wasn't a little bit of money. Right. But to me, it was the principle of the thing because I had made arrangements. I had done all kinds of research. I had right. done, I was prepared. I was ready. And I was excited because I go into every presentation excited, ready, and just yes. prepared to go. Yes. I, yeah. I have butterflies all the time because I'm scared that maybe I didn't prep enough. Maybe I, mm. I, I don't know. So anyway, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do so he said, the only reason I'm calling you again is because I'm leaving. I don't like the boss. And I just want to let you know that he stole your presentation wow. and tried to do it himself. And wow. he bombed miserably. <laughs> mm. And he said, the guy should have, he should have brought you in. Wow. And so anyway. I was in a, uh, I was uh, facilitating groups of um, CEOs and, uh, and, and uh, uh, who were sharing their best ideas with each other. It, they were in a similar lines of business. And one fellow said, I'm not going to share my best. I'm going to share my second best idea, but I'm keeping my <laughs> best idea to myself. <laughs> so always keep the, that bottom line to yourself, Wayne, until, until you present it. Absolutely. So. Yes. Uh. Oh, well, I'm so glad that you did get that closure. Well, I am too. And, and the Z Garnet effect, that's, I had, I, yeah. I knew nothing, but so that's going, that's going into my list of words uh, <laughs> that, well, that we've like learned. To share a few words with you that I have learned in this process. Okay. Um, because of course the big part of ghosting that we haven't talked about really yet is in relationships yes. and uh, social ghosting. It's especially more common. It, the term originated in the early 2000s, but uh, it's really become such a big thing. And that is when you're uh, dating someone, you've had a few dates, or you've been communicating, usually on social media, to just cut off all communication with no explanation, nothing. And ironically, the political situation has done this to families and friends as well. But there are bunches of words that go along with ghosting. I'm not going to go into detail. I kind of think maybe you did on some of this social ghosting or dating ghosting. But uh, there's uh, the. But I'm not sure you went down this path, so I will. There's caspering, which Ooh. is a friendly alternative. You let them down gently before you disappear from their lives, like Casper the Friendly Ghost. 
Yes. There's Marleying, which is Ooh. when an ex gets in touch with you out of Chris, at Christmas out of nowhere, like <laughs> Bob Marley. Yes. Um, there is uh, fubbing, where you're paying more attention to your phone than someone else. So stop fubbing, phoning, fubbing. Uh, there's benching and bread crumbing, bread crumbing and sliding into their DMs and catfishing and kitten fishing and pulling a slow fade <laughs> and savoring and stashing and draking. <laughs> and then, but there's some positive ones here too. This, this positive one is breezing. Which is Reason. being laid back, straightforward, and open-minded in the beginning of a potential new relationship. So just breezing through it. And then penguining, or to penguin, is to find the person you want to be with forever. Wow. <laughs> yes, because penguins are mates for life. Yes. So, yes. so not such a bad thing. I learned that many years ago, and it was reinforced when we went to Antarctica um, and saw the penguins Again, the presenters told us about that, but that was kind of fun. Yes. Wow, those are fun. I like fubbing. I, I don't know. I just Yeah, like, me too. I like I just like the name fubbing because I've never I did heard too. that. And one. so Fred and I, when we go to dinner, especially after we both have been busy all day, maybe we oh, and this is all new slang per self dot com in twenty seventeen these words came into play. But so Fred and I will sit at the table in a restaurant, each looking at our phone but holding hands. <laughs> so we aren't that couple. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. And going going back to Christy's article, she yes. talked about why do people ghost? Um, okay. Much like what you just talked about. Mm -hmm. And she says, telling someone no can be hard. So yes. just don't do it. She <laughs> says, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> she says, some people prefer to avoid conflict. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. The mm -hmm. same thing. <clears throat> it means if I hide from you for weeks and weeks and weeks, you'll just forget about me. But then here comes that the Garnet effect again. <laughs> right. Closure. And, yeah. Closure. Um, they might also be overly busy. That ah. does happen. And I said, wow. So she's giving them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> as nice. I, yeah. And as I read, she says, yeah, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt because if it's not on their top of their to-do list, mm -hmm. likely it's getting buried for now. And you know it well as well as I do when you have a to-do list mm -hmm. and other things compiling into that, you start reprioritizing your list and the things at the bottom continue to go further down and you just don't get there. Mm -hmm. And she says um, it took her once eight weeks to get back to someone. <laughs> and she said, I'm really sorry. I know it's been a long time, but I just got to this on my list to mm -hmm. do. And, and I had to do it. She says, now the person ghosted her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she, and she says, uh, you know what? Maybe they just moved on, but I had closure. So I'm good. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There we go. That's nice. Yes. Okay. And I'm looking at the clock. It is 23. So Ooh. I know we have two trivia questions coming up. And mm. and you also have probably have some great things for us to hear. So I will go to you so we can hear your good you know, thoughts. The last statistic I had was that over 50% of those who ghost are women, um, ah. to, regardless of their generation. So millennials, boomers, it's mostly women, although as... As you get younger in age, the percentage of women who are doing it is increases. And sometimes it is related to abusive behavior. Not always, but sometimes it is. Mm. Um, so so that was the only other thing I wanted to add about ghosting in the social arena. Uh, and what do you think is the number one place word in 2018 for word of the year? I have no idea. Toxic. Which toxic. kind of goes with to ghost when we're using it in the negative term here. Toxic. Toxic. Yep. And then you had a trivia question. I did. And it was, when was the verb ghosting officially entered into Merriam-Webster Dictionary? Mm. You know the answer. I Well, I would say in the early 2000s. But you told me the answer. I did. Okay. You did. Okay. With, your list of, with your list of new phrases? Yeah. When did that happen? Oh, I'd have to go back in my notes and look. You said 2017. Oh, interesting. That and must have been a busy year. It, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think well, it was. I do want to add that my dog, Zeke, sneaks up on me, which I consider the ghost effect in our household. Okay, that's and... it to steal quietly. 
right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. And, and, and I did find another definition for go sing, and then we're done here, uh, to provide a speaking or singing voice for another or actor who is lip syncing. Oh, really? That could be a whole career path. You want to have some bad singing? Get that good singer to quit. They'll just lip sync and I'll stand <laughs> in for them. I'll ghost them. There so, you go. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, Wayne, I'll this stand. has been a fun verb. I have learned a lot and a lot of new words I'll be peppering my language with. So uh, thanks for listening for those in the audience. And thank you, Wayne. And thank you very much, Sheila. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and And for all of you. This, the Zeke Garnet effect. Don't let that yes. bother you, because I'm gonna do it. For, I'm gonna do it to you. Da, 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 da. Sheila, I'll see you next week. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Wayne. <laughs> Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>